guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video we are talking about The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. This is a book about tidying and putting your house in order. I read this book, well actually I listened to this book three years ago and I thought it would be fun to share with you in this video what I have implemented in my life, what really stuck with me, what didn't and share all the ins and outs that I think are useful. Because I didn't want to miss any important information, I re-listened to the book last week. It really touched the minimalism nerd in me. I really feel like doing a little declutter, so that might be a video that's coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. I will start with giving you a little bit of basic information about the book in case you are not familiar with it and then we'll continue. The most basic rule from the book is that you first need to declutter before you can organize your stuff. She says you only have to declutter thoroughly uh, all in one go for once in your life and after that you just have to maintain your house, keep it in order. But because doing a really big declutter has a life changing effect, there will be no rebound if you follow her method. So you will never have to do the entire process again. So her method is to declutter by category. I will put them on the screen here. And when you declutter, you have to put everything from that category in a big pile. So for instance, the clothes, you put all your clothing on one pile. Then you hold every item you own and you decide if it makes you feel happy, if it sparks joy. And if it does, you can keep it. If it doesn't, you have to throw it away. And she says it's important to go in the right order because of the level of difficulty. When I first uh, listened to the book, I was already really into minimalism. So I never did a big KonMari method declutter. I did many decluttering rounds and not in a specific order. And I didn't gather everything I owned for every category. So I guess why this method would work for people who don't particularly love decluttering. But for me, there wasn't really a need to do it all in one go because I just really enjoy the act of decluttering. And in the beginning, I was also honestly just too scared to declutter everything in one go. I was scared of regretting things, mostly sentimental items or things I've gotten as a gift. In the book, Marie Kondo says that your house should be for the person you are becoming now and not for the person you were in the past. And I think she said it beautifully. She says that there are usually two reasons for why people are not able to let go of stuff. One is an attachment to the past or the second is anxiety about the future. For me it was often about my attachment to the past and it feels really great and freeing to let it go. And she also sa says, and I really agree with it, that it will give you confidence in your decision-making abilities. So when you have tidied your space and you have your space in order, it will be easier to make other decisions in your life and you will have more confidence making those decisions. And now we will get into the five categories and I'll share with you what I use, what I have learned, what has stuck with me, what didn't, what I don't like, what I like. I'll tell you all the ins and outs. When decluttering your clothes, Marie Kondo says to put everything on the ground, hold each item and feel if it sparks joy. This is actually the only category of things in which I've always used her method of decluttering. At least when I had a lot of clothes, because now that I have very few, I don't need to do big declutters anymore. The reason she says you should fold your clothes and put them vertically is that you can see all your clothes and you can easily grab every item, because when you put clothes on a pile, it's likely that you will only use the top three of them and the, the at the bottom will never get used or it will be too much trouble to get them out. Plus your clothes won't get as wrinkled because if you fold them this way, there's no pressure on your clothes but when you stack them in a pile, the weight of the pile presses down on the bottom pieces and they will get very wrinkly. I really started enjoying the act of folding because of the Komari method. It's a good way to check your clothing for any stains or damages that need to be taken care of. She really takes in consideration how items are feeling. When they are stored in your closet, it is a time for them to rest because they don't have to work. I think that's such a cute way of thinking about it. I never thought I would be the kind of person who would fold their socks. I would always make balls of them and store them that way. But Marie Kondo says that the elastic will be stretched out and it's a very inefficient way of storing them. So now that I do fold my socks, I really love it and I'm never going back. And Marie Kondo says it's important to not store off-season clothing 
because by the time the next season comes around it is likely that you will forget to put them on so now that i have fewer clothes it's easy for me to keep them all in my closet and i really appreciate not having to bother about taking them out and putting them back so yay marie kondo says that in her book that when you are decluttering you shouldn't be distracted by the thought of being wasteful and i partly agree with it when you are doing your initial decluttering I do totally agree with it because if you are keeping clothes that you don't like and you don't use they are just waste inside your closet so they are waste either way so you rather donate them but after decluttering now that I have a minimal wardrobe I don't completely agree with that anymore because for instance I have two pairs of jeans one that I really love and enjoy wearing and the other ones are like okay they're fine they fit well there's nothing wrong with them but they don't spark joy in that sense so I prefer the other pair but I'm not going to throw away a pair of jeans that's perfectly fine per and fitting me well and then repurchasing a pair that I like a little better uh, for me that would be a wasteful thing to do what I do is I just wear these pants until they are worn out and I'll take that knowledge under consideration when I have to replace the pair of jeans. In general, I do agree that you shouldn't keep things that don't spark joy, but I think with clothing in particular, they are so trend related that people often feel a spark of joy in the beginning of purchasing. The spark of joy fades away very quickly and then they're just part of your wardrobe. They're not that exciting anymore, but I don't think that's a sign to get rid of it immediately and buy something else. The second category is books. I am not a book person. I've never really had an attachment to books. So decluttering books has always been easy for me. We used to have two bookcases filled with books and now these are all the books we have. Some of them are not even mine. I have some cookbooks which I don't use that often either. I do enjoy books every now and then, but I prefer listening to them. Marie Kondo says that if you have books that are unread, that you are planning to read sometime in the future, uh, then you can get rid of them because sometime just never comes. And if there are one or two specific books that you really would like to read after you've decluttered them, then you can just go ahead and repurchase them. If you are willing to spend the money to repurchase a book, then it's likely that you are actually going to read it the second time. The third category is papers. And Marie Kondo says to only keep three types of papers currently using, need for limited period and must keep indefinitely. She suggests to store the papers that you need indefinitely, vertical in clear containers and don't separate the contents. I don't strictly follow that. I tr uh, reduced most of my papers and are only keeping the bare necessities. I am not exactly using her storage method. In this very old phone box we keep our warranties and we do not separate them so if you need one, if we need one we ha just have to dig through the pile. She suggests to throw away manuals of every electric appliance you have because it's likely that you already know how to use it or you can find it on the internet very quickly. And our other important papers we just keep in these folders. The fourth category is komono or miscellaneous which basically is everything else. She does have an entire list of things that are in this category and she recommends to declutter them in the right order. I think for a lot of people, this is just a very big category to declutter. In my experience, it was quite easy to declutter my kimono because usually you're just unaware of the big amount of things that you have but don't really need. It's a process of getting awareness. For me, decluttering gifts has always been very difficult and it still is difficult for me because I get very attached to the gift. I associate the gift really with the good intention from the person who gave it to me. And in the book, Marie Kondo says that the purpose of a gift is receiving it. So the act of receiving the gift and being grateful for the gift, that is what counts and not the object in itself. And the gift giver wouldn't want you to feel burdened with the gift. I think that's very true. And I did declutter some gifts. Decluttering gifts is and probably will always be difficult for me. Gratitude is also a big part of the KonMari method. You're supposed to thank every item you are decluttering 
for its purpose in your life or for being there for you or for learning you a lesson. At the end of the book she also says that after your house is in order you should be thanking your house and thanking the items in your house for supporting you and being there for you and you really should show your love and appreciation for them and I think that's very beautiful in my day-to-day -day life it sometimes is easy to forget about it but I try to be grateful for everything I have and everything that's given to me so after two years I'm still trying to be more mindful about it and trying to be more grateful and last but definitely not least the fifth category which is sentimental items I think this is a very difficult category for a lot of people, at least it is for me. Marie Kondo says some very insightful things about this in her book. I will read it for you, I took some notes. Mementos are reminders of a time when these items spark joy. Truly precious memories will never vanish, not even when you declutter the items associated with them. Is it worth keeping mementos for memories you should otherwise forget? By handling each sentimental item and deciding what to discard, you process your past. You put your past in order so it won't weigh you down. Don't let it keep you from living in the here and now. It is not the memories that we should treasure, but the person we have become because of those experiences. When I first started decluttering, I had boxes and boxes full of childhood stuff at my parents' house. And I tackled all the boxes one by one and took the stuff I wanted to keep to my own place. And I thought it would make sense to put them in a box and put them at the attic because I wasn't regularly using them. But after decluttering some more I realized that putting them in a box at the attic was only a waste of space and it was a shame to keep such precious items in a box. So I decided that if they are worth keeping in my life then they should just have a regular place in my home. So I put them in these two drawers and at least now these items have a nice home to live in and not a dusty box. Now we have covered all the decluttering categories and we are heading into storage because after you've decluttered your things you can think about how you want to store them. With the Komari method you should pursue ultimate simplicity in storage. There's only really one rule and that is that you have to store similar things together so things from the same ca category should be stored at the same place. Marie Kondo says that storing vertically is best and making piles isn't. I personally agree with part of that because I do store more of my items vertically but I still stack some things some items in piles like plates and she stores everything vertically even her laptop she stores as vertically in a bookcase as if it's an actual notebook I think it's funny but not practical for me another thing I've learned from her is to keep everything out of the kitchen and bathroom sink so I tried the method of hanging my sponges and my dishcloth and my brush and it dries way better it's way more hygienic and it's easy to use so I really like that and also in the bathroom sink we were used to leaving our toothbrush and toothpaste out and everything we used on a regular base was just out there and we never really had a second thought about it but it's actually just as easy to put it inside a cabinet and it looks way better so I'm really loving that tip from her oh there's another fun one the first time I heard this I thought it was insane and a little crazy and I never thought I'd do it it is removing labels with text from everything it is because every time you see written text your brain starts reading it automatically so the only way to remove that noise is to remove the labels not everything has removable labels sadly but from the things that do I remove the labels and I surprisingly like it one last thing I want to say is that in her book Marie Kondo says that you can expect regretting decluttering an item at least three times but personally for me I haven't regret decluttering a single thing I can't think of one I've never missed anything well that's everything I wanted to mention today the making this video sparked quite some decluttering and minimalism enthusiasm in me so I will probably be making a declutter with me video in the near future so if you're interested in that subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it please give this video <laughs> so if you're interested in that please hit the subscribe button give this video a like and I'll see you in my next video bye